So this is why it's important to check first. <laughs> so I'm just gonna make myself a few pieces of rock saw to put into the ceiling there. Um, I don't know what the proper way to cut this stuff is to be honest, but I have had pretty damn good results using just a handsaw like this. Um, I'm not really I'm not an insulation guy. In my experience though this was the one of the quicker and more accurate ways to get a nice clean cut. Like once you've uh, cut through with a saw like this, it's not too terribly destroyed. It seems to be pretty decent. So maybe you guys know a better way. Let me know if you actually know the proper way to do it. I imagine it's some kind of large knife. Uh, I don't know that it would be serrated. Maybe it's possible. But for a few small cuts, it doesn't take a lot of effort at all to do this. Plus, I found the saw in the barn when I moved into the house. So I said, why in the hell not use it? I'm just going to cut myself a couple of pieces that are easy to fit through the openings that I've got. Uh, and then I'll pack the area full of the insulation. And that's going to act as my sound deadener to kind of make those speakers sound a little more full. Not so echoey, not so tinny up in that ceiling. Um, and basically try to trap the air for each individual speaker cavity so they're independent of one another. Because they do share the same floor joist cavity at this point. but. This will help reduce echoes and vibration and all that stuff. Okay, to prep the speaker for installation, I need to loosen those foot, those feet for the set screw, the retainers. So I set my screwdriver on there, and as I back the screw out, these get loose. So here's the idea. They're left loose, and once you've got this thing slid into the ceiling, you slide your driver back into this screw to snug it up. When you turn the screw clockwise to begin to tighten it down, you see that that finger begins to pull downward and closes the gap between the rim and the finger itself. Eventually, that will be pinched tight inside of the drywall cavity and hold that speaker into the ceiling. So you see, you could back these out assuming you don't have any hang-ups on that. Uh, so what I do is I usually loosen all four hangers so they're just able to float there. Then I know that they're functioning and that they're working, and all four of them work great. We're going to go up there, we're going to plug the wires into the back of the speaker, and then we're going to mount the speaker in the ceiling. Okay, so here's the speaker. Now I've got a red and a silver colored wire, so red will be red, which is copper, and then silver will be my black. That way I can keep it the same on both ends of this connection. Do a tug test. Because this is a little bit of uh, inaccessible area once it's installed. Make sure that wire's not coming out. This is perfect. Okay, so some speaker wire gets pushed up inside. Left as slack for future. Make sure that your retainers are all turned out of the way so your speaker goes inside the hole nice and evenly. And then take your driver and you're going to gently tighten those set screws. I felt that one turn. Once it starts to meet a bit of resistance and I know it's beginning to pull, I'll move on to the one opposite. Yeah, there it goes. This one's running down now. And that one's grabbing as well. Now mine are short runs because of the lap board that's up there. Nope, that one bit almost right away, which is odd. No, no, it grabbed. Good. Here's the way that I was testing them with my fingernails between at each screw is where those feet are. If you can't get your fingernails behind and pull, then it's a safe bet that that sucker is secured in place. The last piece of the puzzle is to aim the tweeter where you would like to have it facing. I'm just going to go straight back towards the back wall of the living room since most people would be sitting in that general area. Um, and that speaker is physically installed and finished, minus the grill. Now the ones that I purchased here are paintable, so if you had these installed in the wall instead of the ceiling, you can paint this whole thing to match your decor, however you chose. And I was told, and reading through the instructions, 
that these grills, uh, they're not really intended to be removed all that often, but in the event you had to remove it, you can use a paper clip. Basically bend your paper clip into a hook, fish it through the grill, and use the paper clip to then pull the grill down and away from the speaker. So once it's all pressed in and feels flush, the transition is nice. I think these things look pretty well seamless in the ceiling. So that's obviously just a hole, and that's the finished product. They're easily disguised up here. I mean, with the pot lights that I've got, they're pretty forgivable. And the sound quality I'll get out of these is going to be nice. I know, I know that for sure. I've already got a few of them installed. I'm going to insulate this cavity, install the speaker, and make the connections to my stereo upstairs. And then we'll have a listen and see what they're like. Alrighty. So, kitchen slash living room. And I crank that volume up. It took me a few minutes playing with the settings to make everything work how I wanted, but this is exactly what I wanted. Now I can literally have music on through the whole house, which was the goal originally, so excellent. Hope you enjoyed watching. <laughs>